Um, I'm, ha I'm, I'm so happy to see so many of you on this call. I am Robin Schwartz. I am the Program and Grant Director for the Community Arts Partnership of Tompkins County. And the Greater Ithaca Art Trail is one of our programs. You can check out everything we do at our website, which is artspartner.org. That's A-R-T-S partner.org. And since I lose my internet frequently, I just want to introduce Nicole Brokaw. Wave your hand, Nicole. Um, she's our summer intern. She's a cinema and photography student at Ithaca College, and she'll take over talking if I disappear. And I also want to introduce Leah Davis. There she is. Um, and Leah is helping us do the technical stuff tonight. She is a Ithaca-based lighting designer and theater technician. And since COVID-19 hit, um, she's made the jump to digital shows as stage manager and co-producer of many local events. She is available if any of you need help with your Zoom events. So tonight's event is the first of our first Saturday events for the Greater Ithaca Art Trail. And the Art Trail season is generally July through June. And the trail, which started in 1999, has primarily been an opportunity for the public to visit artist studios. And this year's Art Trail features 40 artists, and you can find their profiles, samples of their work, and links to their websites on arttrail.com. We're also working on adding short videos to each artist page, so please check out arttrail.com at your convenience. And you know, from our current perspective, it's surprising that we've never had any virtual events before um, because we can reach so many more people with virtual events. And we can do demos and workshops and panels and show and tell and video tours and the virtual world opens up so many more possibilities um, of sharing our local artists with you. So even when we can safely mingle again, um, we'll continue adding virtual events to all of our programs, not just the art trail, like the Spring Rights Literary Festival, which is now in November. Um, that'll be totally a virtual event. And uh, I'm actually looking forward to it with Leah's help. Um, the art trail this year will consist of these first Saturday events. So every first Saturday of every month, um, some of the artists on the trail will be here with you, just like this. And on two October weekends, the 10th, 11th, and 17th and 18th, we'll host a variety of online events. And we hope that the artists who wish to can also open their studios to you for visits. Um, we'll also have a virtual October group exhibit. And know that all the artists on the trail would be thrilled if you visited their websites, you contacted them anytime, especially to purchase art. So tonight, this event will be an hour. Uh, each of 11 artists will talk for five minutes. Um, and please, everyone use the chat function, which is at the bottom of your screen, to talk to any of us. You wanna talk to me, you wanna tell me something, um, and, or you wanna ask any of the artists questions, uh, just uh, keep that chat room occupied, it's very fun. And that's it, we are going to begin, and we're gonna begin with artist Barbara Mink. Okay, am I unmuted? You are hello, unmuted. Our hello, hello. Welcome to the Mink Gallery. Uh, we have been closed, it seems like forever, uh, as has my spirit. And after about two months of doing nothing but waiting for the news to change, I woke up and realized that this is it, gotta get going. So I started a whole series of very large paintings. And I wanna take you through the first room in the gallery, it's two rooms. and. Uh, show you a little bit of what I've been doing. Um, a lot of people ask if uh, anything inspires particular works, but not consciously, subliminally probably. Anyway, this is called Blue Storm. And this is on black, it's a four feet by five. It's acrylic on black acrylic and resin. And there's a lot of gesture and overpainting and colors. And this makes me feel very, very strong and in control. <clears throat> uh, 
On the opposite is a smaller piece called Reimagining. And this is also has a lot of ink and texture. And that's one of the things I like the most about painting, I must say, is the combination of different elements. And this, the name for this was given by my friend Zilla, who is a loyal gallery visitor, who suggested that we might as well take advantage of the times and uh, name relevance. This is another in, this is the most recent of the very large canvases. This is also uh, pretty much about four by five feet. I'm calling it Reclaiming My Time. And I think you probably know what that refers to since I am a news junkie. But it also, I think spiritually um, means something to me. I am reclaiming my time since that's all we have. I was gonna call it squash blossom. Do you know squash blossom necklaces, those turquoise beautiful things from the Southwest? But I prefer claiming my time. I'm just going for a little close up here. And continuing in the spirit of relevance, I call this screaming inside my heart. It sounds off-putting, but I wonder, if, do you know what this is? Um, when Japan reopened, they opened up amusement parks and they asked patrons on the roller coaster to keep their mouth germs, the order was scream inside your heart, which I find strangely moving and sort of, sort of fun. This is also acrylic with a lot of texture and a lot of gestural. Stepping back for the big view, I call this one Ballet Mechanique. Um, those of you who took part in the Light and Winter Festival all those years ago, may remember the big show we did at the State Theater. Uh, this was a piece by George Antile in the early part of the 20th century that sent people fleeing from the theater. Also my said she saw dragons flying and I was a Game of Thrones theme, but I decided because of the illusion of the piano have asked or noted that um, some of the things I'm doing now are very different from what is usually associated with the way I paint more uh, organic nature abstract landscapes and they are but it's not completely new uh, in about 2000 early 2000s I was doing a lot of uh, abstract expressionist gesture things and this calligraphic uh, example, call it hidden messages. This looks like, I think I have amusement parks on my mind, but this looks like some of the rides you'd see at the end of the pier in Santa Monica or in Florida. And it's the combination of the small jewel-like elements that I like and the obvious overdrawing that looks like underdrawing. So I call it at the end of the pier. And those are mainly the new things in the first room. In the second room are the paintings that I referred to before that are maybe more familiar, kind of organic Northwest skyscapes clouds, hidden cities, the perfect storm. And that is the Mink Gallery. And I'm hoping that people will start wanting to come back with masks and with a few people and there won't be any refreshments, but there'll be good conversation and you're always welcome to stop by. Thank you, Robin, for this opportunity. Thank you, Barbara, that was great. Yeah, think of all the money we're saving on refreshments and wine. <laughs> all those Fritos right. gone to waste. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the next artist is Carrie Zelson Robertson. And um, so Leah, we're not going to show her slides. Um, we're going to just, uh, Carrie's going to show us her studio. So take it away, Carrie.
That's K-A-R-I if you're looking for her in the there list. There you go. Can you hear me okay? Am I am I on? I still see me. Okay. It's under Tracy. Leah's looking for you so that she can uh, spotlight you. There you are. Yay. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks a lot, Robin, and everybody at the Community Arts Partnership for moving things forward in a new way. This is kind of cool to be able to do this. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to walk you through both my showroom and my studio. And uh, thanks to my son, Tracy, who's my COVID bonus, um, home from Los Angeles for a while. He's helping me out with camera work. So anyhow, on we go. This is one of my pieces that it's funny, the inside of it kind of reminded me a little bit of what um, Barbara Mink was talking about, the beautiful work that she just showed. Um, but my work a lot of times reflects ideas around water and the movement of water and the importance of um, good, clean water um, and recreation and all of that wonderful stuff. So come on into the gallery. So this is a, just a grouping of work similar to that one that uh, revolves around that water theme. Uh, it's something that I've spent some time with and really enjoy. Um, the, the flow of it. I, I like the idea of thinking about things that you make out of clay come from nature, come from water, come from the organic matter that um, that is in nature and then we're making it into uh, into a cool thing. Um, over here I'm going to show you another collection and this collection is kind of the idea is kind of like arcs and geometric design and I do um, mostly all functional work, and usually there's some kind of a theme to the collection. Uh, over here are some pieces that are based on fish, and I do a variety of different, you know, cups and bowls. I like to drink wine out of these, or serve food out of the out of those things. So, and then over in this area are. Um, some of the fossil pieces, which again, we're back to the whole water thing. Uh, but I do a variety of different um, cups and tumblers, and I use impressions for, from actual fossils onto my work. So I'm really happy that I had a great trilobite um, to, to use. Um, and that goes on a lot of my pieces when it comes to the fossils. And then I also enjoy plants, and I like to do terracotta work that, again, I, I'm interested in the sculptural aspect of it, and then also just the idea that there is a living thing in my work that totally thrills me. And these are some pieces that I've done, I call them garden walls, and they just sit on a curve, and then they've got these vessels that sit on the rim. All right, so there's a lot to see here. And again, you're invited to come and visit me by appointment, masked. I'd like to have people come on over. So come on in and I'll show you the studio space and some of my workstations, which I will also say is a basement. It's like a little bit basement and it's a lot studio space. This is a spot for doing finish work or um, I do hand building over here and um, it's a nice big table, some bright light. Over here is the throwing area because I do um, a mix of hand building and throwing. So this is my spot for doing that kind of thing. And then I've got a station over in this area for wedging the clay, preparing it, measuring um, weights to, you know, maybe it, there's a process that I'm doing that I need a certain, you know, amount of clay. And so this is, takes care of all of that kind of thing. And then over in this area is the, uh, the kiln. And the kiln uh, is used to fire the work usually two times. Um, it's usually fired this work like the frog bowl that you see here. So that's been fired once. Oh, thanks, Trace. And then I'll glaze that and fire it again. 
And then I've also got some work that's coming along here. These are planters, they're terracotta. Yep, terracotta planters, adjustable. And I've had quite a few requests for those this year. Um, over here, I've got some tripod cups. These have been a really jaunty little addition to my line of work. And that came from thinking about planters and now I'm making little boxes and playing around with the tripod work. So um, also one thing to mention, I know my time is almost up. So you can find my work at 15 Steps on the Commons in Ithaca or at the um, Potter's Gallery, which is in Penyan um, and here. So thank you very much. Thank you. This is so cool. I'm having so much fun. And, you know, usually with the art trail, the artists don't get to meet each other because they're all in their studios. So that's another reason that this is uh, so great. So thank you, Carrie. Um, next up, we have Sue Brightly. And Sue, it looks like you're using one of your pieces as your virtual background, which is so cool. Uh, take it away. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Well, <laughs> because my, I don't really have the studio space that anyone's going to want to see. <laughs> but uh, hi, my name's Sue Brightly, and thank you to Robin and uh, um, Community Art Partnership. It's wonderful to have this opportunity. And uh, just like you said, Robin, it's really nice to get to see the other artists and actually get a peek into your studios and everything because, um, yeah, I don't get this chance. So, um, I don't know. I'm just going to show you some of my paintings I've been working on lately. So, um, I guess uh, Robin or, or Leah, whoever it is that's, oh, here it goes. Aha. Yeah, I've been, uh, during the quarantine pandemic times here, it's been uh, a lot on my mind. So, my paintings have been taking uh, this turn and if, if some people that are familiar with some of the things I've been painting, um, mice come up a lot and revolutionary mice come up a lot. So this, this little mouse is out protesting safely. Um, it, these are small ones. I've been doing uh, some others. I think that's after the next painting. Um, what's the next one? I can't remember. We can just switch over to it. Oh, Button, Button the Kitty Cat. Um, it was interesting last year uh, during the open weekends, um, a lot of artists actually do come from other areas and come visit uh, the studios, which was a lot of fun. And this one artist lady was looking at my stuff and said, yeah, I really like your, your paintings, but it would be really cool if you painted something big. Have you ever tried anything big? I'm like, no, you know, not for a long time. So I started doing a couple of big ones and button here is 30 by 40 inches. And I really enjoyed um, being able to loosen up, just loosen up brush strokes. And um, I do a lot of sticks, sticks and trees and stripy sticks and trees show up in most of my work. Um, just because trees are so present here in Ithaca and I live basically out in the woods. Um, one of the other things I do is wrap sticks with yarn. And so it sort of shows a, a different, I want to say energy or something inside the, the sticks. And I, I like the way they work. People look at this and they often go, oh my gosh, it's such a cute painting of a cat. But I look at it and I see all these menacing sticks underneath. <laughs> this is a little differently. Um, what was the next one? We can go to the next one. Ah, yes. So uh, I've been spending a lot of time on Zoom because I, I have a regular day job. And uh, so I'm in a lot of Zoom meetings all the time. And so I've been doing a series of Zoom um, portraits. And of course, I'd rather paint animals than people. I think I tend to judge animals a little differently than people, or maybe you have different biases, I don't know. So this one is called, um, oh God, what is this one called? This one is called, oh, Froggy. Zoom. Yeah, Froggy. Working From Home. Yeah, oh no, it's, it's actually called Working From Home. I just oh, okay. Froggy, but Working From Home, and uh, 
it's I've got another one that's um, a, a chicken having a you know the virtual backgrounds it's a big thing um, and kids the online learning so a whole series of these and I'm making them into postcards too which is you gotta do something fun in this whole pandemic thing um, next next slide ah yes so the past year or so I've been um, kind of slowly taking on commissions, which is kind of a scary thing because I just noticed painting for somebody else is a completely different experience than painting for yourself. <laughs> just was every single brush stroke holding my breath. Oh my gosh, is this like wrong or right? Um, fortunately, uh, the folks that I painted this for, it's their dog, Rocky, and uh, they liked it. Actually, it was funny because I painted, uh, well, put together a sketch and sent it off to them and a, a, oh, the first draft of the painting. And they came back and said, you know, we liked it, but you know, can you do something a little more whimsical? I was like, oh, yes, yes, I can do that. I dreamt of a snail, so I just threw a snail in there and it kind of came out cool. So I like to have fun with, with paintings and I was glad to have uh, people who enjoyed that too. I did another couple of commissions the past year or so. Um, one of them was with another dog who had caught a butterfly and then had this expression of what do I do now, which was fun. It was a friend of mine who called me up and said, hey, I've got this idea for a painting. Can you do it? Um, I think the last one, the next one, last one. Yeah. Cool. So in addition to paintings, my regular acrylic paintings, um, I've been working with wasp paper, which is, it's just been a whole different uh, avenue for me. I'm really enjoying it. Um, had this great big giant, we called it the uh, Death Star, who was hanging up over our house, <laughs> a wasp hornet nest. And when it came down, I it was just amazing. I want. I opened it up and checked it out. It was just, you know this amazing technological feat. And I'm pulling off these layers of paper, and it just occurred to me, wow, this is like paper mache. You can see all the the teeny lines that the wasps laid down, and I, and I think it really spoke a lot of um, trees and, and time. You know the way that it layers on. I I just found myself. What if you did paper mache with this? And I started wrapping stuff with it and. Um, putting um, the cutlery and some other things uh, being wrapped by, it. I guess it's sort of my Christo moment, but I, I felt um, the whole idea of all the turmoil and, and stuff that we're going through, that nature persists, perseveres, and ultimately is just going to cover up all of the foibles uh, of humanity and, and so that's just sort of something I've been working with and enjoying a lot. So if anybody has any wasps nests, <laughs> give me a call because I'm out of I'm out of medium here and I've got lots more ideas. So, so Sue, um, I have to I have to cut you off. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, good. Um thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm 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 trying to be the timekeeper. Um, so the next person up is Mark Tucker. So can you guys hear that soft little chime? That basically means you have 30 seconds left. So Mark, listen for that. And uh, Leah's looking for Mark. There you are, Mark. Take it away. Wait, let me put my mask on. No, don't. <laughs> oh, wait, that's right. We don't need it. It's virtual. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you. And if I don't hear the chime, just give me, uh, let me know. Um, hi, I'm Mark Tucker, and I'm really impressed with all the artists I've seen so far. It's really amazing. Um, I have two, two mediums I work in. One is uh, called Third Eye Photographs, and, and the other are, is Earthborn Art. And the photographs, all my work is about seeing things in nature 
and then giving them a new look or seeing, let, allowing people to see things differently in life just by what's around us and through us. And, and so that's the, the basis of my work. I don't necessarily have a lot of motor skills in terms of painting or sculpting or things like that. So my earthborn art is uh, assemblages where I find all the pieces and it's like a puzzle where I find all the, it could be stones or shells, but mostly stones and things I find in nature. And then I, I, I put them together and give it a, a different look. Um, and my photography lately in the last several years has been about, um, again, seeing things and then shifting it to get a different perspective. So, and my work is, a lot of it is literal, but also a lot of it is playful. Like, I, uh, I like to have a, a sense of the play in life. And how I tapped into my work was, was years ago, I, the friends took me down to Long Point State Park and I started discovering stones and all that myriad of shapes. And then I took a, a couple hundred home and I started moving them around and I started making things. I said, it's like having a puzzle and the whole world is a puzzle pieces and then putting them together to see how they, they look. So that's my main focus. So uh, I'll start with the photography and I gotta switch. This first piece I call uh, Rock Wisdom and there's a little glare on it, but this is a uh, Colorado was an outcropping of rock and I shoot, the, in, I shoot the image this way and then once I shoot it, I, I turn it vertically to give it a, a different look, obviously, the perspective. And so the, the water reflects the shore and it becomes a, the symmetry. And so then you have like faces and things in there. And so that's called rock wisdom. <laughs> this other one is called uh, Earth Keepers. And that was in California. I was along. I, canal there and I shot again the image that way and then and then I uh, take it there and I, obviously there's faces and faces and small things it's a lot easier to see of course in person and uh, get that perspective this one I call Ith Ithaca Inlet Totem and you can see uh, this along the Ithaca Inlet when the water is very calm I don't photoshop and then I took it that way and then, and there, I'm gonna do a close up. See if you can see, you see there's, there's spaces and faces and creatures of all kinds. And then the last one in terms of photographs that I'll show you, this I call Costa Rica totem. It was a pond in Costa Rica when I was visiting there and there, as you can see, it's like, oh, to me, it's like a totem pole of different creatures. So that's, uh, that's the uh, uh, third eye photographs. Um, my other work, now going to the stone work, because we've got a few minutes left. This is a, a butterfly I made through uh, finding the stones. This I call Neptune. And to me, all the, the uh, creature, the pieces look like King Neptune. And then here's, uh, again, more playful stuff where all these faces are, all these are found pieces here. I'll, I'll zoom in. This I call self-portraits. It's like 17 self-portraits, different motions, different feelings. <laughs> I'll do a quick scan of some of the bigger faces I did upstairs. And then, um, th then this, this is one of my favorite for early pieces I did. It's called uh, um, Offering to an Open Door. And in this case, the angel is guiding the person kneeling before an open door and he's offering this vase to, and to me it represents uh, surrendering and just being open to the opportunity of life. And the door represents, there's a cosmic eye on the door 
keyhole shaped stone and it's just offering to the opportunity of life and what it, whatever it may bring and that little vase i found was a piece of a seashell it looks like a a vase here's some more uh funny faces again some of my best friends are made out of stone so the, this this piece is called um uh, sticking your neck out for truth where obviously the person's head is on the end of a stick and there's an angel in a cloud and they're <laughs> dispelling wisdom to this, this person uh the wonder of discovery is um this this is a a friend that i discovered and i first uh, found that hard hat it was a turtle shell in a in a uh old dry bed that I found and I said oh that could be a hard hat and then of course it became that and I'll do suns and sometimes wood that's a piece of wood that I've added some pieces to and uh, just give you a quick rundown of some of the but again there's a lot more to see if you choose to come with masks and everything's safe and and clean here so I invite you all to come and, uh, and uh, experience the, the wonderful artists of Ithaca. There's so many b amazing people here for this, uh, this size town. Yeah, so, and CAPS is an amazing organization in bringing us all together. I appreciate you very much. So, let me. I'm chosen this moment to cough. That's Thank okay. you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you all have a good time. So I don't think Ethel Drana is on the call. Um, <coughs> so Ethel, Ethel, if you're anywhere on the call, can you type into chat what your name, what name you're under? Because we're not seeing you. And since we're not seeing you, we're going to go on to the next person, which is Brian Keeler. And I just want to remind everybody to go to arttrail.com to look at everybody's work and look at their websites and you'll see so much more from each artist. So let's go to Brian. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. Thumbs up. Okay, uh, welcome to uh, my studio. I'm up in my man cave. I'm not actually down in the uh, where I work, uh, but uh, it's been great to hear everybody and uh, uh, see people uh, talk that I've been Facebook friends with for quite a while, and uh, see your work. So it's uh, this is great. So thanks to Robin and all the community arts uh, partnership people. I'm um, going to sh show you some paintings later in slide form, but I'm going to just going to do a little bit of a uh, advertisement here. I have some uh, plein, plein air classes coming up here at our gallery, the North Star Art Gallery. We're just a few miles outside of Ithaca and uh, one is on uh, August 22nd and the next one is September 19th and the next one is October 10th. So if you or if you know anybody that likes uh, to uh, paint outdoors, we have some beautiful grounds here, uh, a nice pond and the gardens and statues and so forth. So um, I invite you to come here for that. But before that, we're having a, a soiree here, a little bit of an open house. Of course, we'll observe uh, uh, safety measures. So you should wear a mask, but we're going to have a, a soiree and I have a swing band uh, and we're going to play for that. It's called Zingology and we'll play it on our, on our deck here. And uh, so it's a, an outdoor party. There's plenty of room here. We have a couple of acres, so it'll be easy, easy to uh, self distance. Um, and I also wanted to mention I'm involved with this environmental group uh, in Pennsylvania and it sort of combines my art, uh, the aesthetics with uh, the ecological. Uh, it's a beautiful area just south of here about an hour and there, uh, as you probably are all aware, the fracking industry is, uh, is big time in Pennsylvania. And I'm so glad that New Yorkers uh, have stopped it at the borderline. It would just be horrible to have uh, this uh, invasive industry uh, come into the Finger Lakes. Um, so we have this new organization with a terrific website. It's called protectnorthernpa.org. Uh, 
Okay, so there's my little uh, advertisement for the things that we've got coming up here. So I guess we can start with the, the slides now. So if you put up the first uh, slide, that would be, uh, be great. Okay, so this first slide uh, is uh, about what I was talking about with the, um, the fracking industry in my hometown, Wyalusing, Pennsylvania. They're doing this absolute abomination of building this LNG, stands for liquefied natural gas, where they take the natural gas and make it into a liquid and they have to freeze it. But this painting that you're looking at, I've been painting on this stretch of the Susquehanna River for um, my whole career, you know, 30 or 40 years, and it's almost a sacred spot to me. This was uh, started as a plein air, or well, I did a plein air study. This is actually a studio painting. It's a, a large painting. It's about um, oh, 30 by 40, somewhere in, in those dimensions. But this view that you're looking at is right next to where they're planning this 265 acre uh, travesty of nature, beauty, and safety. So it's sort of my um, uh, homage to this area and, and a, uh, a mission to keep it beautiful for future generations. And um, so uh, these paintings that I do, plein air, are really communing with nature and, uh, and showing my um, spiritual connection or appreciation of the, the beauty of the various areas that I paint and uh, have, have lived in and, and that we all appreciate and want to see uh, kept that way. Okay, if you'd show the next slide, please. Uh, this is a recent uh, plein air painting. <clears throat> I did it right here outside of our um, uh, uh, house here. And it's also my uh, studio and our galleries in this uh, 1865 farmhouse. It's just about three miles um, east of uh, Ithaca and Cornell on Snyder Hill Road. So um, uh, plein air means painting out of doors. And that's the way I do a, a good portion of my work is just setting up my easel like the Impressionists did. And it goes back to uh, one of my um, uh, models for this type of work is uh, Corot, and he painted out of doors in Italy. And I've been teaching and painting in Italy for for 25 years. And um, this painting was started. And I also have these uh, YouTube clips of my uh, paintings where you can see me actually starting these uh, works. And uh, I often uh, put links to them on my Facebook page. So if you're not a, a friend of me, uh, a Facebook friend uh, yet, uh, you can friend me and you can see a lot of my recent work there. Okay, you can go on to the next slide. Okay, this is one of my most recent ones. I just did it at a, uh, a spot uh, at Stewart Park, kind of near the boat club. I had never been there before on this particular path. It's a wonderful little path uh, kind of between uh, uh, the boat club and going back towards the uh, the, the other building there. And um, it's a large painting for plein air. Plein air paintings are usually done fairly small, like uh, 10 by 12 or something. But this is a large um, uh, uh, canvas, or it's a piece of linen that's glued to a piece of uh, masonite. And uh, I did it mostly, I get them about uh, 50, 80% completed or, or uh, started right there on location. So it's the impression of the, uh, or interacting with uh, what I'm seeing right there. And even the kayakers, I kind of uh, did a shorthand version of them, dropped them in really quick, and then uh, finished them up back here in the studio. And um, so that's one of my most uh, recent, uh, recent paintings. Okay, you can go on to the next one. Okay, this is um, another painting of the Susquehanna River, and it's actually the same location uh, of the first one that I showed you, that sunset. And this is uh, obviously a nocturne painting that I, uh, based on a, a plein air painting that I did right there on location. And, uh, but I turned it into a night scene based on many uh, river trips that I've taken and, um, and kind of invented the, uh, the, uh, the kite or the canoers in the background. So it's a combination of uh, observation and invention and, uh, and building it up from um, memory and uh, imagination. And this painting was used on the cover of a uh, recent book by um, Brooke Lenker of uh, Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. He wrote this novel about um, uh, the Susquehanna River. And Brooke is also the executive director of Frack Tracker. It's a wonderful organization that uh, monitors the uh, fracking industry. So it was great to uh, connect with him. And it was a real honor to have this uh, 
painting uh, on the cover of his book. It's a large painting. It's um, about uh, maybe four feet by, it's roughly a square painting, four by four, somewhere in that uh, neighborhood. <clears throat> okay, you can go on to the next slide if you would. Okay, this is also a recent painting. Um, it's of uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And I've been doing this paintings of Wilkes-Barre because it's not that far from my hometown, Wyalusing. And I have this one collector who's collected about 15 or 18 of my paintings. And they're usually of these uh, churches that are in uh, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton and Wilkes-Barre area. And it's <laughs> something like uh, reflecting on a cityscape. And uh, so I have this uh, vehicle here in the front and the each window of the uh, vehicle kind of becomes a painting in itself. It's in a way it becomes what's called a uh, polyptic, which means a many panel paneled uh, painting sort of harkens back to a Renaissance painting. But, hey, Brian. Uh, my, yes. Brian, I'm gonna. Um, we've gone way over five minutes. Oh, okay. So gonna, I didn't. I didn't well, hear a chime. I didn't hear a chime. I know. I think. I think I have to figure out where the microphone is actually on my computer here. Okay. Um, so let's just look really quickly at his last slide, just because we've got it queued up. Or was that the last one? Oh yeah. And this is this is the interior I recognize of the North Star Art Gallery. And um, I'm just going to take this opportunity to say that the North Star Art Gallery is open um, for visitors. And you know, one thing you always realize when you're looking at these images that the artists are showing us is when you see the images on their website or on arttrail.com, you don't necessarily know how big or small the paintings are. You really have to see them live. So if any of you are interested in going to any of these studios, just call the artist and see if they are <laughs> accepting visitors. So um, I am going to thank you, Brian. Okay, and thank you very much, Robin. I'm going to move us on to uh, Ivy Stevens Gupta is next. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can. All right, awesome, awesome. Welcome to my studio. It's located at 11 Wedgwood Drive in Ithaca. I am primarily a painter. Um, I use canvas and birch board. Uh, the painting actually behind me is mine and it's four feet by five feet. And uh, if we want to go to the first slide, I can describe some of my work for you. Hey, Mark, um, I'm sorry. Mark, can you put yourself on mute, please? I can't seem to do it. So like Brian and Sue, I'm very much inspired by nature. The painting to the left is acrylic on birch board and it's called Milky Way Reflections. Uh, what's unique about my artwork is a lot of my paintings are sealed with an epoxy resin. And uh, interesting to note that I have to use a blowtorch during this process. Um, and the painting on the right is called Blue Skies Ahead. It's about two feet by four feet. And you can't tell by looking at this photo but there's a tiny airplane up in the right-hand corner flying into the big fluffy white clouds. Now what I did to kind of prep for this painting is I took a lot of photographs of clouds to use as reference. And this one took me about a month to complete and it also has resin on it. Uh, if we go to the next slide. So here are two different types of paintings. Uh, both of them actually won international art awards last year. The first one on the left is called Redstone, and this is a combination of acrylic, oil, and polymers on a UPO paper. And the one on the right is called Floral Happy Dance, and it's an abstract floral painting. It's acrylic paint. I use wax pastels on this one and pencil, and it's on a gallery wrapped canvas. And if we go to the next slide. So like a lot of you, uh, when the pandemic first hit, I was really craving color. Uh, so I decided to come up with a series of paintings. These are modern, mid, or excuse me, they're abstract mid-century modern paintings that are very colorful. And you can tell by looking at both of them that they both contain the same amount of lines in them, the same color schemes, 
Uh, the one on the left is called sailing, and the one on the right is called beach blanket bingo. And they're about 12 inches by 12 inches, acrylic and a touch of glitter on birch board sealed in resin. We go to the next slide. So on the left are an example of two very large paintings that I do. Uh, the first one, you can kind of see a little piece of it. It's called Gender Blender. And uh, it's called that because of the color scheme of mostly pinks and blues. And then the one right next to it is called Aquatic Symphony. And this again is acrylic on a gallery wrapped canvas, but both paintings have gold leaf and silver leaf and they're sealed in that high gloss resin. And oftentimes when I'm applying the resin, I'll have to wait for it to dry. And then if there's any little bubbles, I'll have to sand it all down again and apply another coat. And sometimes I en end up putting two to three coats of resin on each painting. <laughs> so there's several processes involved in each one. Uh, the images to the right of that are 50 individual paintings that I created for a fundraiser. Each painting was six inches by six inches. And the styles range from, if you can see the apple and the strawberry, photorealistic to completely abstract. But the theme for this exhibit was color therapy, which is something that I'm certified in. If we go to the last slide, you can see people who are in my studio. These folks uh, took a color therapy and an abstract painting workshop. They typically last for about two hours. All the materials are supplied. And I've been teaching color theory, color therapy, art marketing, and painting for the last several years. Uh, if you go to my website, ivycreativedesigns.com, or if you connect with me on Instagram at ivystevensgupta.art, you can find when I have upcoming classes or workshops, and you can see my most updated work. So how'd I do for time? Well, I was, uh, I was so busy coughing, I forgot to put the timer, but I'm sure you did perfectly. Yay. All <laughs> Thank right. you so much. That was so perfect. Thanks. Um, we found Ethel Vrana, so she's going to be next. For some reason, um, there's someone on the call called Betsy Jo Williams, and a whole bunch of people came in with the name Betsy Jo Williams. One of them was one of the artists, Michael Sampson. One of them was Ethel Verana, but we figured that out. I don't know what that was all about. Um, but uh, this is all like little problem solving as you do the Zoom calls and I'm having fun. So Ethel, are you ready to be next? Yay. We don't have to do this if you don't want to. I do. Let me just watch just the beginning of this. Oh. We can hear you, Ethel. Right. Or no, we can't. Oh, you can't hear me? Oh, now we are. Now we are. Yep, oh, you're good. Okay. All Ready right. to go. Well, hello, Robin, and I think you're doing a fantastic job, and I think this whole thing is just totally amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, I'm an abstract artist, but I always um, used to paint um, landscapes, uh, but I took a course in um, abstract collage uh, about 15 years ago and it changed everything. It was fabulous, it was free. Um, I could mess around, didn't have to worry about drawing and the things that came out of that were just fabulous. So from then on, I started painting abstracts. So we can start with number one. Okay. This is called Everlasting Brightness, and um, it's part of um, a series called Feeling and Form. I work in this series, and uh, this is one of the paintings in that series. And you can see that these colors are either pure colors or they're um, colors with white added, which makes them tints. And that's why I call the painting Everlasting Brightness, because because of the pure color and the tints, it has a brightness. And it was a palette that was loved by the Impressionists, 
who uh, wanted to get a feeling of light in their landscapes. All right, the next one. All right, this is called Child's Play and it's part of the series Line and Color. Um, and um, you can see here that um, line makes a very important, uh, is a very important element in this because your eye follows uh, the lines up into um, the area at the top that has a uh, little dancing things and down at the bottom are like blocks or stones piled. It's kind of um, whimsical uh, impression of, of the things that children like to play with. Okay, number three. All right, this is uh, part of the series um, Color and Space. And this is called um, Color and, um, let's see, what's it called? Yeah, well, it's also called Color and Space. So in these paintings, um, I really tried to get a feeling of space on the canvas and with colors floating. So I had to study what colors uh, would come forward on the canvas and which colors would go back. Uh, in order to get a three-dimensional feeling, which I think is just so unique because you're painting on a two-dimensional canvas and trying to create three dimensions. Okay, next one. Um, this is called Symbols, and it's part of the series I did called Shapes and Symbols. And um, the symbols in this painting are derived from looking at ancient uh, rock carvings uh, in Europe. And these um, symbols are, are so unique and intriguing and mysterious. And I'm sure that um, they represent something very profound to um, ancient uh, civilizations. Okay, next. This is um, abstract expressionist painting and it's part of that series and it's called Towers. The abstract um, expressionists uh, were very um, free and uh, expressed, uh, tried to express, and express their emotions and tried to get uh, movement in their paintings. And they were very free and spontaneous um, and, and, and employing an element of chance. And so in this painting, this is all done with rollers. And you can see the very strong vertical blue uh, columns here with flashes of red and yellow. <clears throat> um, I called it towers, but you can see it's a very strong free expression. So I think that's it. Um, if you um, would go to my website, that would be wonderful and sign up for the newsletter and, um, and my um, email. Sorry about that. Uh, and that would be wonderful. And thanks again, Robin. This is really fantastic. Yay. <laughs> okay, let's see, am I off mute? So thank you, Ethel. Um, the next person up is Michael Sampson, who also came in as Betsy Joe, but I've changed his name, Leah, so you should be able to find him. And I think I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you, and Leah's looking for you, so there you are. Yep, take it away. Uh, my name is Michael Sampson. I'm a painter living here in Ithaca, New York. Um, I'm an abstract painter who works from live models. Um, and this is my first year in the art trail. And I'm very pleased to be a part of the art trail. Um, I'd like to show you around my studio. Um, I just switched the camera. Um, so these are my paintings. 
try to stay stillish. Um, so they're very abstract, but um, they're directly from models, uh, acrobats, uh, uh, traditional models, uh, dancers, all sorts. Um, so I like to work on a lot of different paintings at the same time, as you can see in the studio and in various sizes, from very large to pretty small. Some, are, some of the paintings are just started and some of them are, have been going for quite a while. And I have a little rack for my small, small paintings. This. And this is my palette, which I've had for maybe 30 years. So it has a lot of paint and stuff all over it. Um, how am I doing on time? You have, oh, you have two minutes and 23 oh. seconds left. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm really pleased to be a part of the Ithaca Art Trail this year. As I said, this is my first year being on the art trail. And uh, I really look forward to having people in my studio here in Ithaca at the base of Truman Park. And um, I really appreciate the opportunity put forward by Robin to show my studio and um, to be a part of the Ithaca art trail. So thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Next up, we have Gary Burkow. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Is it Burkow or Burkow? Yeah, Burkow is it. Hi, everyone. I'm glad you've entered my studio. So I started out really strongly with oil paintings, but recently um, have seriously developed my ceramic skills and ceramic studio. Um, the, the type of work that I'm doing now is very earth inspired, textured, uh, which, is, which is also quite similar to the paintings that I have done. So a couple of my paintings are behind me here. Um, I'll pick them up in a little bit. And I have, like, right now, these are, these are planters. So we've got planters happening. And I've been experimenting with some different colored clays, not just glazes. I am all about glazes and how they, let me move this over, and how they interact with each other. But surface tension is really an important aspect for me. So if I have this one piece, which um, I don't know if you can see all the details. Um, I don't know if going closer helps. It's very, very much like, uh, like a tree bark. But on the inside, I work glazes and I'll do multiple glazes so that there's a variety of colors and aspects happening. Um, this is, so the, the way that I'll, I'll work the clay and I'll get uh, these kind of textures, I'll layer different slips on top, sometimes slips, sometimes just uh, stains, 
Where's the scan? Um, I'll do scans. And, and then I will heat it with a blowtorch. And I don't have that right here. But I'll heat it with a blowtorch. And then I will continue to work the piece using just one hand, just a hand from the inside, supported with my other hand. And, and then pull out. And uh, sometimes I will do design work in it. Like right now you're seeing some angled lines. Uh, sometimes I'll do angled lines. Sometimes I will do textures, which I'm not seeing right now. Um, there's some pieces behind me as well. So then I'll go through a series of staining using different types of stains uh, on the outside, sometimes stains, sometimes I'm just using, allowing different colored clays to contrast. And like in this piece, this is actually two different colored clays, uh, a red color clay and a black. And uh, can we see the textures? But on in the inside, we have all these glazes happening. And I'm, and I'm really inspired not only by earth, earth colors and textures and being out in the woods, but also by Japanese, uh, Japanese pottery and Japanese tea. So this is carved, this is hand carved on the bottom, as opposed to um, creating texture with fire and hand carved on top. And this is a small teapot. And tea. And sometimes this is uh, this type of teacup called a unami um, or a chawan has multiple glazes and gives, a, I try to give a wood fired look to it. Um, which I'm really inspired by, but have not done as of yet. Um, sometimes my glazes will come down to different areas, but then inside there's, try not to get the glare on you here uh, to see that. So my first love being painting, let me pull this one up. So uh, I, I will work with abstract forms and inspired by movement, people, um, sensuality, and, um, and, the, and the painting is really thick. I'm going to try and put it sideways, see if you can see how thick that is. And it's, it's a matter of all of this is brushwork even though it has that kind of thickness to it. And I also work in uh, series. So that was a, a series of nighttime uh, concert inspired pieces. And then we have one that also really thick with clay. I don't know if you can see all that. And so just to finish up, um, I have been playing a lot with planters and looking at succulents and orchids and my wife has so many orchids in the house and just like, okay, creating different pots for them. And that has been really inspirational for me. <laughs> These are just raw clay stains and really hardy textures. Thanks for joining in on this Zoom time and having me be part of this group. I really appreciate it. Take care. Thank you, Gary. That was a great presentation. Whoops. Um, next up, we have Celia Bowers. Hello, Robin. Thank you very Hi, much. Celia. <laughs> have you got Thank you for doing this. This is fun. Have you got my first slide? There you go. Ah, yeah. Well, this is a painting I did when we first went into lockup. 
And it, the color isn't too great in the slide. It's actually a little browner uh, than it shows here. Anyhow, I was just thinking of obviously an abstract shape. I thought it was a totally abstract painting. Uh, it's very smooth. There's almost no, there's no brush strokes. I, I painted it with several layers of paint and sponged it and did various things. Uh, anyhow, I thought I'd done a completely abstract shape, which had some sort of figure ground reversal, uh, maybe because I was feeling a little uh, odd about being in isolation. Um, but then I was looking out of the window three days after I finished this painting and I saw a cloud that really was exactly the same as this. So I thought of calling it nature imitating art, but actually its name is cloud shape. So let's do the next one. Okay, this is a painting that I started in England two and a half years ago. We were walking along a canal in, uh, Manchester, and I was absolutely fascinated by a sort of eddy, and there was uh, sunlight playing on the water, but I just wasn't happy with the painting. Anyhow, I've had this painting, which is quite small. Most of my paintings are 36 by 48, but this one is only 24 by 30. And I brought it back, and I've been Twice in the last two years I've been working on it and then while we were in lockdown, I suddenly put it up in the easel and finished it. Um, uh, it's oil and canvas and it sort of exemplifies two things I'm really interested in, which are reflections and light and the play of light and how light makes reflections. Okay, next one. Okay, this was just, okay, this was one that I painted when I was in the studio. I think it was based on seeing an evening last in Stuart Park, because even though we're in lockdown, we still go for walks in Stuart Park, mostly in the evening. And I wanted to show the contrast between the light at the bottom being dark going into the lighter light at the top where evening is not back in. Uh, Oop, you're breaking up. Yeah, I thought I was breaking up. We, you're back. Okay, well, let's go on to the next painting. Um, okay, this is a painting that was based on memories of going to the Tate Gallery in London time after time after time when I was a teenager and looking at the, the Turners. And I wanted to show the kind of light that exemplified Turner's paintings, you know, that like going to vanish. Can you hear me? Yeah, there's some weird feedback, but you should just keep going. Okay. So this was just it's a homage to, to Turner. Um, and it meant, it's meant to be that time in the evening where the clouds are instantaneously just going to kill that light totally, but they haven't quite done it yet. Um, and uh, that again is oil and canvas and it's 36 by 48 inches. The last one. And this is the, a painting I painted actually a little while ago. Uh, we were in New York. I love painting cities. Uh, I like reflections and I love painting city views, especially when it's raining or snowing, or in this case, sort of a mixture of sleet and snow. And we were walking. There really wasn't a figure, but the colors from light shining on snow falling just enthrall me. And for some reason, I thought of the loneliness that people feel in a big city. And so there he is walking, slightly hunched uh, by himself with the glow of life and light in the background, but he's separated from it. And I think that's 
This is also oil and canvas. It's also quite a big painting. Um, but really the point of the painting is the coloring of the snow by the lights of windows, street lights, whatever. Okay, I think, did I hear a... You heard a gentle chime. <laughs> I did hear a chime. Yeah. Okay, well thank you Robin. <laughs> that last one is my favorite. I don't know if I should have favorites, but the last one is my favorite. So um, we're going to end with Robert Romish. And before we end, I just want to thank everyone for coming and to please check out arttrail.com. And uh, you're all going to now be on my mailing list. Hope that's OK. Uh, so let's pull up Robert Romish. And there you are. Hi. Yeah. Okay, wait, why can't I unmute him? Okay, how about that? There you are, yay, we hear you. Now we don't. <laughs> that was weird, we heard you for a minute. It keeps popping up to mute and unmute for some reason. So, all right, well, thank you here. I'm uh, outside at my home and studio and gallery at uh, what we have named uh, Sanctuary in the Woods. It, uh, it's surrounded by trees and when we moved here, we named it that because it's just, it's just so inspiring and it's so like being in a sanctuary. So uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's nice to share this with people also. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am a, a mixed media artist. I, I say I'm an artist and a builder. I have been building custom homes and custom furniture and, uh, for, for over 30 years. And I still run that business. It's Classical Woodworks. Uh, we kind of run our, our sanctuary in the woods as a as a um, kind of a homesteading situation where we have many irons in the fire. And uh, one of the things is, is that we have uh, a hip camp. So I built a bushcraft camp that has swings and teepees and, uh, and different things like that. So it's on hip camp at sanctuary in the woods uh, and you can find us there and if you contact me directly we will give you a little bit of a discount if you'd like to come and camp uh, we can still socially distance for you know the COVID situation so what I wanted to uh, showcase today is uh, I'm outside and next time I'll take you inside the house. I have over 150 pieces of art in the house, uh, sculptures, paintings, guitars, uh, bronze, steel, uh, all different kinds of uh, art. So we're looking forward to opening up our studio uh, next time. And by appointment, I'll do appointments. So I'm gonna switch you around here and I'm gonna show you uh, what I've been working on, the latest project, and I'll give you a little glimpse of my studio. One thing, uh, the, the closer I get to my studio, the less reception I get. So I'm going to flip you around and I'll show you what we got here. All right, here's my studio. I built this in the middle of the winter when I first moved here three and a half years ago. I'll take you a quick quick tour in here and then I'll swing you around and I'll show you the project that I've been working on. Uh, call it the COVID caravan. So I do furniture, furniture restoration, uh, cabinetry. Okay, I guess I'm going too far. So we'll get away from the studio. And I'll show you the project that I've been working on. All right, <laughs> here it is, the COVID caravan. I had a five by 10 utility trailer 
that I wanted to enclose and make a multi-use uh, vehicle out of it, meaning that I can camp in it, I can use it for work. Uh, you know, you could use it for anything that you, anything that you, your mind can think of. has aluminum uh, wood siding awning window there window on the back it's going to be fully insulated it has shore power it will have a 12 volt system and I'll show you a quick view inside it's hard to see it's getting a little dark Oop, door <laughs> but it's all fully insulated I haven't gotten the siding put in yet uh, and this window opens, but I don't have the, the glass. The glass is the last thing for the exterior on both of the windows, and then the exterior will be completely done. This has been a really fun project, and I did build this for myself, but I could be persuaded to sell it. My next project is probably going to be a tiny home. Uh, tiny home on wheels, of course. I already have probably a, a dozen designs sketched out on paper and uh, you know I'm really excited about doing that. So there's that and sorry I can't, can't get all the way out into my studio but uh, I've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing everybody when uh, when everything opens up and again you can you can call me and contact me if you're interested in taking a look at my studio and uh, the the caravan and I don't know if I mentioned but I have probably over 150 150 pieces inside my uh, inside my home gallery all right well that's about it thank you very much and i hope everybody stays safe we'll see you thank you bob may i call you bob yep. thank you robert <laughs> oh this was so much fun wasn't it i can't wait to do this every first saturday of every month um if anyone has any suggestions for next time you can email me i put my email into the um into the chat or you can go to our website, which is artspartner.org anytime. And uh, so we're gonna end this call and uh, I hope everyone had a really great time and have a good night. I wanna know why it was so much lighter at Bob's house than it is over here in my house. <laughs> good night, everybody.